Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Hustis and I'm going to be your online teacher for beginning percussion class. Today we're going to go over just the basics of what we need in order to participate in percussion class. First of all, congratulations on picking the coolest instrument in band. A lot of fun, you're going to have a great time, and really the coolest instrument imaginable. We actually get to have an entire class dedicated to us hitting things. How cool is that? So without further ado, let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need and some of the things you're going to need to know about procedures for beginning percussion class. Okay, class, let's talk a little bit about just coming into the band room or the percussion room for your percussion class. Your teacher has lockers or shelves or a spot specifically uh, assigned to you for you to put all of your equipment. So when you come into class, make sure that you put your backpack and your school supplies either in your locker or on your designated shelf in the place that you're supposed to put it and make sure that you do it in the same spot in the same way every single day. That way we don't get equipment mixed up and nothing gets damaged, okay? Okay. The first thing that you're going to need is a stick bag and some specific types of sticks and mallets. So I have a small stick bag, made sure that my name is on it, that I wrote with a Sharpie. You can put a piece of tape on it, but just make sure that it's labeled so that we know that it's yours. Many of these stick bags look exactly the same and you don't want to get it confused with one of your classmates. Okay. So name, and I have Mr. Hustis written on here and we have our sticks and mallets inside. All right, so the minimum equipment needed in order to be in beginning percussion class is a pair of snare drum sticks, a pair of keyboard mallets that we use for bells and xylophone and marimba, and these cool little cotton ball looking things that are timpani mallets. And those are used for the really cool kettle drums. And we'll get to talk about those later. All right, so let's talk about these just a little bit. Most drumsticks look exactly the same. All right, so a lot of the other kids in class, their drumsticks are gonna look, and it's really easy to get confused if you put them down, if you take a break, or if you set, the, set them somewhere and you don't realize that you left them, they're going to get lost or they're going to get confused or mixed up with somebody else's equipment. So let's make sure that we have our initials written on the butt end of the stick. So in the very, very back here, I've gotten my Sharpie and I've just wrote MH for Mr. Hustis. Okay. So I did that on both of my sticks. That way, if there's uh, ever a time when I accidentally leave them on a music stand or something like that, when I practice, somebody will see it and they'll know that it's mine. If there's somebody else in the classroom that has the same initials as you, then you guys need to rock, paper, scissors, or use a different color. Maybe use a red Sharpie and somebody else use a black Sharpie. So maybe double check right now and make sure that there's not somebody else in the room that has the same initials as you. All right. Next, I used a silver Sharpie to write my initials on my, my mallets. Right, so M, H, and silver. Same thing, you can, you can wrap a piece of tape around it and write your initials on that, that'll work too. And same thing with the timpani mallets. On the butt end of the mallet, I wrote M, H, Mr. Hustis. All right. Um, by the way, the timpani mallets, this cotton ball looking stuff is actually felt, um, but it's not the felt down like it that you can get at Walmart or at your local craft store. This, this felt is actually really expensive and it's usually imported from Germany and something like that, it's super fancy. So try not to touch it with your hands. The oil from your fingers will actually kind of ruin it over time. So try not to touch it as much as possible. You can even leave it inside the plastic if you want, um, the plastic that it came in. So if you wanna do that for now, you can leave it in the plastic and then put the plastic inside of your stick bag, all right? So. Everything's labeled, your stick bag is labeled, you're good to go. Next, everybody needs a band binder. Mine's upside down. Band folder, Mr. Hustis Percussion. 
your band director might have fancy logos and that sort of thing, but let's make sure that we all have a three ring binder with the cool little sheet protectors where you have developing the percussionist musician, you have your book inside of there, and that's what we're gonna be going over in class. And all of your band music will be in the back, right? So all of the stuff that you're going over will all be in your binder. So make sure that you have your binder. Pencils. We always have pencils. As a matter of fact, I have tons of pencils. Pencils are what we use in music class. We never use pens. The reason that we don't use pens is because the music has to be given back. So a lot of times your band director will hand you something and we can't write it in pen or something like that because you're gonna have to give it back and it, and it doesn't belong to you. There might be times where your band director gives you a piece of music and gives you permission to write on it, but make sure that when in doubt that you always write in pencil because that way when you turn it back in, you can erase it, okay? So let's always, always, always use pencils. And might do random pencil checks. So in the middle of class, we might say pencil check and everybody's just supposed to, you have about 10 seconds to get in and you should be able to reach your pencil and just hold it up, all right? Because we write down a lot of things. Sometimes we'll change how loud we're gonna be. Hey, that part, it's gonna be super quiet. And so we'll write that in with our pencil. So make sure that you have your pencils um, in your bag, okay? Now, for practicing, um, sometimes at home and sometimes in class, and again, that will be up to the discretion of your band director. Make sure that you listen and follow instructions. We are going to have a practice pad with a stand, and we're going to have a practice mallet instrument at home. Okay? So, I have here a practice pad. This is just a general practice pad. They come in all different shapes, and there's different sizes and that sort of thing, but you need to have a practice pad. Um, again, make sure that you label it. So put a piece of tape on it and label it. And it needs to have a stand. Now this is a fancy snare drum stand. Some of them have an adjustable stand that comes with the practice pad. That's awesome. And I put a cool little flag on the bottom of mine with my name on it as well. Okay, just in case I've taken my pad off and I set it aside, I wanna make sure that it doesn't get confused with one of my other classmates. Okay, last thing you're going to need a metronome. What is a metronome? Well, in the old days, a metronome was the cool little TikTok thing that you used to see in the movies. It used to be sitting on a piano. But now, since we live in a cell phone age, we have apps that have really, really cool free metronomes with them. So I have downloaded a pro metronome. It's free and it has the cool TikTok goes back and forth, I can see it. You can turn it up and turn it down. I can put my headphones on and practice to it. That way nobody hears it. But this is gonna make sure that we play at exactly the same speed all the time. It's gonna make us really, really talented percussionists. Now, the practice mallet instrument, I'm gonna put some examples up on the video screen right now. You can get a practice marimba, which is a smaller version of a full-size concert marimba that we use in concert band. You can also get a practice xylophone. Again, it's a smaller version of the xylophone that we use in band and orchestra. Or you can get a bell kit, which is a smaller version of the bells or the glockenspiel that we use in concert band. We're gonna go over snare drum using our drum pad and mallets using our practice instrument at home every other week, give or take. Some weeks we might do a little bit more, some we weeks we might do a little bit less, and there may be times where we're working on band music or other things, but generally speaking, we're gonna try and do drum pad work followed by mallet work, and we're gonna go back and forth, all right? So those are the things that you need at home. We'll make a list, set it uh, on the video. You can show your parents, make sure that you have everything that you need, and then you'll be off to the races and ready to practice to become an outstanding percussionist.